It marks the 25th anniversary of President John F. Kennedy's assassination. A vigil in Washington by former Peace Corps volunteers is one of many planned tributes around the country. Candy Crowley examines the man and the myth and what might have been. There are some who say that communism is the wave of the future. Let them come to Berlin. The magic of his voice was a combination of Harvard and Boston Irish. He came along at a time when all politicians wore big white hats and here's this fellow striding through history bareheaded and confident. In a political sense, Jack Kennedy is the candidate that all other candidates are measured up to today. But it is unlikely anyone will ever measure up. Life is no match for legend. There, there are two JFKs. I think we have to separate them out. There's the JFK that was created after the assassination, which is kind of the myth JFK, the Camelot JFK. And then there's the real JFK, the one who was president of the United States. I think over the years, you get a, a mellow glow uh, after uh, a person dies. And in this case, you had the youngest president ever elected uh, with his life stu uh, stuffed out. And there he has remained, preserved in time, making it hard to imagine that John Kennedy would be 71 now, a contemporary of Ronald Reagan, the oldest president ever to serve, making it difficult to remember the real JFK. Had Judith Exner somehow been found out and confessed while he was still in office, the idea that he was posing as a family man with the children and Jackie up at Hyannisport and him down in the White House romping through the summers, no, that wouldn't have sold. He might have been forced out of office. The legislative record was not spectacular. And the, uh, the legend probably uh, it goes beyond reality. It is not so much what John Kennedy did, but what he might have done that makes him what he is today. A magnificent maybe. He just didn't have the chance because the two years, ten months, and two days he was president, every day I saw him, he was more a president than the day before. He would have won big in 64, and then you would have seen the real uh, John F. Kennedy. A symbol of youth and eternal hope. Today and tomorrow, we shall miss him, and we'll never know for sure how different the world might have been had, had fate enabled him to complete his agenda uh, for peace all over the world. Candy Crowley for CNN, Washington. We'll be back. In Washington, hundreds of thousands of people came to pay their final respects to President Kennedy. But in Dallas, the shocks were not over. Just about time we started making that turn, uh, Ruby stepped out from behind a man over here. And out of the corner of my eye, I caught him as he, as he started down that last step just before he shot. And with Oswald died the answers to questions that are still being asked now, a quarter of a century later. Questions of who, questions of why. Tony Clark, CNN, Dallas. Ask what you can do for your country. There's a Secret Service man, spread eagle over the top of the car. We understand Governor and Mrs. Connolly are in the car with President and Mrs. Kennedy. The President of the United States is dead. Headline News, I'm Lynn Vaughn. They are pictures that are etched in the mind's eye, moments that are relived again and again with frightening clarity. On this, the 25th anniversary of his assassination, Americans will pause to remember John F. Kennedy. Ceremonies are scheduled around the country, including several at Kennedy's grave in Arlington National Cemetery. Tony Clark has a look back at the day that has left a lasting scar on American history. The reception line is formed, and there is Mrs. Kennedy, the first lady stepping from the plane. We were actually campaigning in Texas. It was a three-day visit. And I was swimming with the president the day before we went in the White House pool, and he was looking forward to it. The president's car is now turning on to Elm Street, and it will be only a matter of minutes before he arrives at the trademark. Uh, as we did the first turn right there by the county buildings, uh, we heard a, a pop, a loud pop like a firecracker. When the first shot was fired, you know, I knew the president had been hit because 
lady cradled her you know, some people they were saying they thought it was fireworks or something, but as the president brought his hand in, he'd been waving to the people on the right side of the street, up to here, and he had fallen toward Jackie. As I was watching at that time, I saw this uh, uh, puff of smoke and a flash of light. Uh, and I knew a rifle or something had been fired from behind the bushes on the grassy knoll. And the fellow sitting next to me shouted, jabbed me in the ribs, and said, look up in the window, there's a rifle. I could hear on the radio, they were this close. Someone uh, said, get us to the nearest hospital. A presidential car coming up now. We know it's the presidential car. You can see Mrs. Kennedy's pink suit. There's a Secret Service man, spread eagle over the top of the car. We understand Governor and Mrs. Connolly are in the car with President and Mrs. Kennedy. We can't see who has been hit, if anybody's been hit, but apparently something is wrong here. Something is terribly wrong. We dash into the trauma room at the hospital and uh, doctors going in and out and there were so many doctors going in and out of that little room that, uh, that, that I had hoped that he could be saved. I'm, in my mind I'm saying, well, why would they have more doctors if there wasn't a chance? In all of the resuscitation effort, we never had any evidence uh, that there was any sign of, of life. Just a moment, just a moment, we have a bulletin coming in. We now switch you directly to Parkland Hospital and KBOX News Director Bill Hampton. The President of the United States is dead. I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. Across town, Dallas policeman J.D. Tippett was shot and killed after stopping a man for questioning in the assassination. Police converged on the Texas theater where they believed the gunman was hiding. That's where they found Lee Harvey Oswald. I just stand on the simple fact that he did it. I mean, from what we, from what we determined and found out <coughs> from the evidence and the preponderance of all that evidence, he was it. In Washington, hundreds of thousands of people came to pay their final respects to President Kennedy, but in Dallas, the shocks were not over. Just about the time we started making that turn, uh, Ruby stepped out from behind a, a man over here. And out of the corner of my eye, I caught him as he, as he started down that last step, just before he shot. And with Oswald died the answers to questions that are still being asked now, a quarter of a century later. Questions of who? Questions of why. Tony Clark, CNN, Dallas.